what's up divas and divos so it's your girl april you guys already know what time it is it is real talk diva time real talk wednesday real talk diva time real talk devo time it is real talk wednesday so i know you guys are looking at my head wrap for the day i absolutely love this head wrap um i did get it as a gift in my p.o box and this is the original the real okay the real african material head wrap so i was so excited when i got this i did show you guys this like two real talks ago and i absolutely love it to death it's nice and durable fabric um i did have it on a couple of my um recent to come hair tutorials i did wear it but guess what okay so yesterday girl i was at the post office mailing off some wigs okay and um i checked my post office box and i had another package in there from the same lovely company which is this one right here and you guys know i will mispronounce anything possible like that's just what i do um not that it's done on purpose but it's by accident okay Definitely, it's by accident. Um, hold on, guys. Okay, so as I was saying, the company that sent me this is a business owned. It is a single female business owned boutique online, and it's called Kishi Culture. And they do specialize in Afro eccentric accessories from head wraps. And she's also going to be selling some bonnets on her website. I'm not really sure when, but let me tell y'all. So yesterday I get the package from Kishi Culture in the mail. And I was surprised because as soon as I seen this purple, I already knew what it was. Like there's no way that another company could just send me something and it has the identical purple on it. Like there's just no way, right? Like no way. So when I opened it up, I seen this bonnet in there, right? And I had been wanting one of those larger size bonnets, like like forever like the africans print ones like this that are like really stiff like you know tammy roman wears you know from basketball wise i love her bonnets like those are everything okay so i have been looking for those for a minute and i have yet to find them when i have found like one on a website it was sold out they were all sold out so i was just like dang a girl ain't never gonna have a bonnet not like saying i really really needed it but i just wanted one because i would think that it looked really cute doing like YouTube videos and YouTube hair tutorials. You know, you got your little stylish bonnet on, you sitting there looking all cute and stuff, whatever. So I still do my head wraps because that looks just as cute, even though it looks a little bit lopsided right now. But um, y'all gonna act like it's not because I'm really trying to, you know, when you look in the mirror of the screen of the camera, it's so hard to see, um, to get it correct. So yeah because everything is kind of like backwards. <sighs> and I'm so picky. I, I have to have it correct. But okay, I'm gonna just deal with it for today. So anyway, um, I opened up the packaging, right? And I seen this bonnet in there. And I was like, oh my God, I've been wanting one of these for a minute. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't like the African print, but it was one of those bigger bonnets. And it was just like, okay, April, this is what you've been wanting. This is what you've been asking for, okay? So I took it out and I was so excited about it. Why did it say on the um the bag, this is for Mumsy? I was like, this for Mumsy? Oh, my little heart went down the drain. Like seriously, my little heart just went down the drain. I was like, oh wow. Cause Mumsy wear bonnets all the time. As soon as she come home from school, she put her little fishnet, um, you know, lunch lady's um, bonnet on and because she doesn't like the hair to be touching her. But then she has this one now. So I gave it to her. They're not, they will be selling them. Kishi Culture, Grace, her name is Grace. She will, who is the owner and founder and CEO and just owner of it all. She will be selling them soon on her website. So I was like, okay, that is so nice. I thought it was a really nice gesture because Mumsy likes bonnets too. And it fit her perfectly because you know, she has braids. So I thought that was so nice, but my little heart was still like upset. But then I looked in the package more, girl. Did a girl get one of her own? Now, mine's is a little bit different from Mumsy. I'll definitely show it to you in another video. But like I said, she's not selling these as of yet. And this does look like it is hand, not hand sewn, but, you know, sewn on a sewing machine. It looks like it's really great, sturdy. Mine's has a bow, 
which means that my big old head, my long head, when I'm wearing my wigs at night, I can definitely fit this over it. So I was like so excited when I seen this, like I do got my own bonnet. So at first I had put the bow in the front because, you know, I, you know me, I'm a little bit off sometimes. And I know y'all like, girl, why are you putting the bonnet on now? But I just wanted to show you guys. So if you got a lot of hair, you got, you know, it, it don't have to be your own. It definitely don't have to be your own hair. I mean, like it is, it definitely is your own because you done paid for it and stuff and you got it installed. But you know what I'm saying? You could definitely rock this and tie it as tight as you can. Give yourself a headache or whatever you want to do. But it will definitely fit, okay? So I was so excited about this. I did sleep with this on and it's a silk bonnet. Okay. So, girls, look at that. Now, I don't think it's supposed to be tied like this, but I'm just showing you guys just because. So cute. So roomy. Perfect. Could you imagine if I went outside like this to the grocery store? Y'all be like, bitch, what's wrong with you? Mm. Yes, I'm coming through showing you all kind of bonnet realness on the real. Girls be like, ooh, where you get that bonnet from? I'd be like, Psh. Now, I wouldn't be like that. I would definitely tell them because I do like to get the word out there, but I'm saying cute bonnet not your ordinary black silk bonnet this one is cute so hey and what's so funny is this these two colors combined together used to be my favorite colors when i was a teen i probably was like 13 or 14 and i had one at my mom she never does what i want her to do she never did what i wanted her to do so i did want my mother to paint my walls in my room pink and purple and i wanted it to be pink with purple polka dots you know something? I'm glad she didn't do that. Who the hell wants to take their time out and just do all of that? Um, she didn't, but you know, it is what it is. But those were my two favorite colors back then in the day. So yes. So also, besides the bonnet, hunties, okay? A girl love head wraps. And I was so like in I was just like so amazed with these because I have been wanting these, like I told you guys, for a minute. And I mean, like I do have some on my wish list on Amazon, but I just never take the time to get them. You know what I mean? And there's so many to choose from. And I just be sitting there like, I don't know which one to get. So it's cool when somebody just choose them for you because then, hey, you done did the work for me. I ain't got to do nothing. I ain't got to choose. I ain't got to sit here undecided. Because a person like me would be like, no, I don't want that one. No, I don't know about this. That's me. So when somebody just choose them for me, all the work is done. So I did get three new head wraps. And every last one of them that she has sent me, I absolutely love. There is one in this three that she sent me that I think is my favorite out of all five of them. Like, seriously. Now, first of all, let me tell y'all guys this. The fabric is so freaking durable. Now, I'm not going to open it all the way because it is long. You know, it will fit. Me, I went ahead and kind of like put to do this look. I just folded it down a little bit and then wrapped it. But I definitely opened it up both ways. This fabric is so durable and sturdy and just like so vibrant. The colors are so pretty and just bright and vibrant. Like this is like some good fabric okay and this is all handmade so you'll definitely want to check this out if you guys are looking for like the perfect head wrap you guys have to get this i have never had one until grace kishi culture had sent me one and i did see the difference like you know i like to wear head wraps but i did see the difference in the head wraps versus the one that i wear who is it hello I did see the difference in the head wraps, you know what I mean, um, versus mine that I purchased at like the 99 cents only store, you know, they get long scarves or wherever. These will make a huge difference, um, especially because you could do t different types of styles with them. And because the fabric is so durable and like stiff, it allows the style to stand. So I have been watching a few tutorials on how to wrap different ways with this type of fabric. And girl, let me tell y'all, I have learned a couple and I will get to doing them. But I wanted to show you this one right here, which she sent me. This one is so pretty. It has like other colors in it. This is gorgeous. This colors are so pretty. I love them all. And I couldn't decide which one to wear today. So I decided to put this one on because of the colors that I have on. Now, the next one right here, 
This is a very pretty blue color. I like the print on this one as well. Okay, same fabric, same concept, okay? Look at this blue. Like, I have a lot of blue, this color like in, as in shirts. So this is going to come definitely in handy because of the color. It'll definitely go with like my, you know, attire. This one is just as pretty. It has like this beautiful brown color in it and it has all these different um, like designs in it. I think like this is so gorgeous. Like I'm seriously like, like amazed, like and I do have it inside out so let me show you this side because you can see it's just a tiny bit different printing like you know it's the back of it but look at this these are gorgeous and they're so inexpensive on her website like I have seen them being sold for like $40 and stuff no 20 bucks you can't be I think they're 20 bucks but I do have a coupon code down below that she made for me so you girls if you definitely want to get yourself some head wraps from Kishi culture you can check them out they will be adding new stuff these are all new and like I said she will be adding the bonnet sooner or later so you'll definitely want to keep checking on that but this one is gorgeous as well and now my favorite one out of all five this color is like this one oh, man I think this one is my favorite. Okay, hello. Oh, this this is so pretty. Like seriously, it also has that blue in it as well. But this yellow is so pretty, and this deep red. Oh my God, the pattern of this is gorgeous. Okay, like I ain't never been excited about no damn head wraps, but these are so pretty. I'm like so grateful and thankful, like appreciative. I really am because it's nice when you get something that you really, really like want. I mean, I, I get everything that I get. I do want, I appreciate everything. But when you wanted something for so long and you're just so undecided about it and then you get it in the mail as a surprise, you just be like, dang, she must have been reading my mind. Like I really need her to just stay out of my head with the head scarves and the bonnets, like just stay out of my head. Okay, to stay out of it because there might be some things up in there that you really don't want to know about, girl. Like seriously, on some real shit, there might be some things in my mind, in my head that you'd be like, oh, let me just let me just um unfriend her, unsend her, and stay out of her mind. But yes, so once again, thank you so much, Kishi Culture, for these. These are beautiful. And then this one was my first favorite out of the first two that I got. This one was my favorite because I just love pink and I love this bright, like yellowish color. So now I got two favorites. I like all of them. They're actually all my favorite, but I'm so happy that I'm I'm able to rock that blue because I have a lot of shirts those two blues that I could wear those with. So yes, you guys, I will definitely post all the info below. Also comes per, um, wrapped in purple tissue paper, handmade with love. Okay. Who don't like stuff made with love? Like seriously, I be telling my kids that all the time when I make their grilled cheese sandwiches, they'd be like, um, this tastes really good. Cause it's made with love, girl. It's made with love. All right, hello. So definitely check out Kishi Culture. If I'm pronouncing the name wrong, I do apologize, you guys. You know, I will chop up anything that is just like anything at all. Got me a bonnet, hello, hello. So you guys, that's just about it. I hope you guys checked out me and Mumsy's um, recent video yesterday, which was not yesterday, yeah, yesterday. Um, Cause you know, today is really Tuesday, but it, it, it did post today, but I'm going to pretend like it's Wednesday because that's when the video comes out. But make sure y'all check out me and Mumsy's recent video for our Dollar Tree haul. Um, I hope you guys like it. And also we do have, well not we, but um, I do have like a new video up, which was just my bathroom tour and storage of how I store things. So yes, you guys. And did Amazon invite me to become one of their store influencers? I know pretty much everybody, well, not everybody, but a lot of people probably do that. But I guess they noticed the bitch and was like, hmm, she always buying some shit. Let, let's invite her. So we're going to see how that go. I'm going to have to read the instructions and see what it's all about. You know, the tea. But yeah, other than that, um, hmm, ain't really nothing much been going on. A girl is starving right now. Like, I'm hungry. I did lose, like, two more pounds, um, which is great. I don't take the Fetramine anymore. Fetramine is like a weight loss um, pill. You have to have it prescribed to you. Um, and it's not that I don't take it anymore. They give you a break, so you get to have 
um, I think it's 11 weeks of it. It's either 11 or 12 weeks. I do believe it's 11 weeks. And then they take you off of it for four weeks. So I have been without it for two weeks, which is great. Um, and it seems like when I'm not using it, I am more self-conscious and I'm more like active and mindful of my diet. Like I don't, I have not had any of those trolley worms, which I absolutely love in like weeks now which is good because they're not really good for you anyway. And they're definitely not good for your teeth. So I haven't had those in that long. I have been eating fruit every morning and I love peaches. So every morning I eat peaches. I like to leave them out for like three days. So I buy a bunch of them and then I'll leave them in the refrigerator and then I'll take them out and then I'll wait for them to get really ripe within three days. But in the meantime, I have other ones that's already really soft and then I'll cut them up and put them in a the bowl because they're so juicy. I cannot stand eating a hard ass peach peach and y'all already know i got new teeth all up here the whole top row so a bitch ain't trying to be breaking off on new teeth or just be you know it's just not for me i just i'd rather not okay let's just be ladylike and eat them shits with a fork and a bowl and i have been doing like the seven minute workout from that i found on youtube and it actually really works because i let me tell y'all I'm not really trying to be working out for that long. Like seven minutes is long enough. But I mean, like I, I would do like 30 minutes, but ain't a bitch seen seven minutes and it been working. Shit, shut the motherfucking front door because if I can do seven versus 30, then hello. And then once it gets a little bit cooler, I will be back to my two mile walks in the morning and then I'll be cool with that. And then I'll do seven minutes. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, seven minutes, she has like a lot of workouts for seven minutes. Um, Hopefully I'll remember to post her down below so you guys, if you're interested, you could check them out. But they're not strenuous. They're not like, you know how some exercise, you just be dying. You just be dying, like ready to get the hell off, whatever it is you're working on. Not with her, because I mean, seven minutes, you know, you have to build up your resistance to it, your stamina. But seven minutes is a decent amount of time, especially for what it has been working. And she's been doing this for like 25 years. She's not an old lady or nothing, but she has been doing this for 25 years. And even though I just ate two big, huge peaches, I feel like I have not eaten anything all day. So I'm definitely going to get me some of my clusters that I like to eat. They're um, granola nut clusters. I absolutely love them. They're from the Dollar Tree. I bought 30 bags of them shits. They are so good and healthy and they keep you regular. I know TMI, TMI, but I'm just saying, but I would just... You know, when you regular, you get to go to the bathroom all the time. You regular, you lose some pounds. So a girl will, you know, weigh herself before she sit down and then she'll get back up. And girl, thank you. So, yes, you guys, I know that was like a little bit much TMI, but, you know, we all human. Other than that, ain't really been nothing going on. Um, I guess we're going to jump right into this real talk because I do want to do a synthetic wig tutorial right after this that'll go up tomorrow on Thursday. And this is by It's a Wig. It's their Vixen 100% Human Hair Premium Mix. I know human hair, 100% human hair premium mix like they put that shit in small letters underneath there so you be at the store like oh 40 dollars for premium for real hair let me buy this shit no it's mix premium mix i don't even think there's a speck of human hair up in that shit but whatever um so this is the vixen and this one is called french wave color 1b what color did i get i got a color 1b and you know you could part it four different ways this is available at sam's beauty so i'll pull um post it down below for you guys in case you want to check it out before you see the video but it's a four-way lace part for multiple style options the only thing that be bugging me out is the hairlines on these like y'all I, I like the fact that you can do so much with it but let's just be realistic your hairline look like a goddamn half a moon but whatever we're gonna try this out hopefully it's something nice so i want to you know get through that video so that i could do that and then i'll go pick up mumsy from school so you guys if you have a real talk and you want to send me an email you can go ahead and send it to muffin is my lovers 2012 at gmail.com make sure you put in the subject line real talk and um if you want to change the names of the people that you are mentioning or talking about in the video um, or in the email, you can go ahead and let me know that you changed the names. Otherwise, more than likely, 95% of the time, 99.9% .9 of the time, if you don't tell me that, I'll just change them myself. So 99.9% .9 baby zaddies, okay? Yes. So let's get into this real talk, okay? Okay. <laughs> 
Okay. Dear April, I love your videos. I'm sorry that this is so long, but I really need some input. I changed the names in this for you. I'm sorry if this seems out of order. Two years ago, I met someone on Tinder. We talked on Tinder for a few days and then exchanged numbers. We chatted from the minute we woke up to the second we went to bed. It was like this from the end of August, the end of November. Then one night, he just disappeared. Ghosted. Done. Blocked me on all social media and my phone number. I should mention at the time, he was 39 and I was 24. So I was shocked he did that because, let's be real, girl, he was way too old for that shit. It was all very unexpected. Fast forward to June and I was really tipsy and decided to text his number. Not sure why I never deleted it. He finally replied the following evening and acted like nothing ever happened. So within a day, it was back to the way it was before, talking all day, every day. We hung out a lot and things seemed to be getting serious. Well, now it's been a year of this, but I don't know where we are. I've asked and he always says he has feelings for me. We spend time together whenever we get the chance and FaceTime all of the time. But lately, it feels like things are fading. I know he's a single dad with a very busy 15-year-old and he has her 50%, 50-50%, and we live an hour away from each other. I guess I just really see a future with him, but I don't want to waste my time. But I don't want to get hurt letting this go on like this. What do you think I should do? I attach photos of us down below. So first of all, girl, this was not even long at all. Like, I don't know what she talking about it being long because, hunties, that, that was like super fast. Like, <laughs> I could have just threw in another real talk e video email because, you know. And look at her. She's so cute. I love her cheeks. They're so cute. Oh. Okay. Now look at Mr. Who is this calling my phone? Hello. 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 You want to just listen to my voice? Okay, well, there's no Rita Platt at this fucking number. So, anyway. All right, so look at Mr. Okay, so first of all, let's just get into it. She didn't even change no names because she didn't even put no names in there. So, we just going to call her Rita. Since they just called my phone talking about Rita, we're going to call Miss Lady here, Rita. And I'm just checking out their pictures because they're both cute. But you know what's so crazy? They look like, to they're both cute, but they look total opposite of one another. You know how they say opposites attract? They look total opposite of one another. And you can tell the age difference. Like I said, she was 20, she's 24, and he is 39. So he looked 39, you know what I'm saying? He looked like his age. He looked like he 40, let's just say. The nigga's 40, okay? And um, she looked like her age, 24. So it's just weird because it to me, I ain't saying nothing's wrong with it, but she looked like she dating her dad. You know what I'm saying? That's her dad. They going out for lunch. She taking out her on lunch day. Taking his daughter out for lunch day. Let me tell y'all something. First of all, we're going to call her Rita and we're going to call him Tom. Now, Rita, first of all, this, I, you know what? This is so crazy because I have, it's not that I just heard about Tinder, but I probably heard about Tinder probably like a year, a year and a half ago. I, I thought it was, I didn't know what the fuck it was until I thought that people, I, honestly, I thought it was an app because that's all you hear is people going on there and wanting to meet up to have sex. That's all I thought it was. Like, if you want to have sex with somebody, go on Tinder. That's it. So I thought it was like a sex app because that's how I hear about it. And I was just like, when I first heard about it, I was like, oh, people are crazy these days. Like, dang, you on just go on an app and get some booty? Like, where do they do that at? And this is what I thought of it. But my son had to explain to me that it was not made for that, but people have made it into that. I guess like POF. So I, I, it's probably any of those online dating sites that they have made it into that. So this is what I thought it was. And with the way she spelled it, T-I-N-D-E-R, I never knew it was spelled like that to right now. I thought it was tender, like a chicken tender. That's how I thought it was spelled. Now, if I'm correct, let me know. If I'm incorrect, let me know. I did not know it was spelled like that, T-I-N-D-E-R. 
because I ain't had no need for downloading an app, especially if I thought it was an app that you just go on there and you just want sex from people. I mean, because listen, I'm old school. I need to some things I need to get up with the trends with. And some of them I don't like Tinder. I, I don't I don't need that. You know, I don't need that app. And I don't really need to get up with the trends on that. But I guess I could really like know about it a little bit more like, OK, well, Tinder is really not for fucking. But people have made it into for fucking, you know what I'm saying? But it's really not for that. OK, now she had met him on Tinder and, you know, Rita met him on Tinder. He, he 39. She was 24 at the time. So I know the motherfucker's 40 now. OK, because a year has gone by. And um, so they 15 years apart. They they started talking to each other like within two days after they met on Tinder and, you know, talked to each other all day, ch chatted with each other, messaged each other from the daytime, from the moment they woke up to the moment they went to sleep. Do y'all bitches got something to do? Like, OK, that's cool. You know what I'm saying? Chat all day. I don't even do that. I, listen, I'm the type of person. Don't fucking chat with me all day long. I have a shit to do. All right, motherfucker, I got shit to do. My husband don't even do that, but he got a job. He be at work all the time. And he calls me always faithfully on his lunch break. And then as soon as he gets home. So, you know, we chat enough. But, okay, so they chatted every day from the moment they woke up to the moment they went to the bed. And I'm pretty sure it wasn't not all verbally. They probably was texting and shit like that, which is cool. You know what I'm saying? Um, He has a 15-year-old son who he has. 50% of the time. So, okay, he has to do the dad thing. That's understandable because we women have to do the mom thing too. You know what I'm saying? We got to make time for the kiddos. But, you know, I'm not really sure what they were chatting about too much. But did she wake up like months later to the motherfucker, like blocked her from all his social media um, sites? Like, I guess Tinder, um, Let's say Instagram, Facebook. He just blocked her ass from everything and then blocked her number from calling too, which was kind of fucked up. But months down the line, months and months down the line, she got tipsy. No, bitch, Rita, you got drunk, okay? Because when you tipsy, you still in your right state of mind, so you don't do no fuck shit. But when you drunk, bitch, you know, you do some dumb shit and you don't realize that. So she texted him one night while she was while she was drunk, okay? And he didn't reply to the next evening. That's 24 hours later, okay? I know I would have felt some type of way. I probably would have felt embarrassed of myself. But anyway, so they went back to the same old, you know, shit that they was doing before, texting and messaging each other every day, all day long. They hung out, you know what I mean? She's into him. He's like, you know, he has feelings for her. Everything is going good. They live an hour away. Let me tell you something. What do I think of it? Because she want to know what's good. What should she do? Basically, she probably don't want to be strung along no more. This is the shit. Like, listen, what do y'all bitches not get about men? For real. Like, I'm going to say this because I've already been through the shit and I just don't tolerate no shit. I'm not about to tolerate no shit. If you want to give me shit to tolerate, then you just giving it to the wrong motherfucker because I will give you that shit right the fuck back and you will not want to tolerate the shit that I'm going to give you back. Okay? But here's the thing. Don't be chasing after no motherfucking men. All right? There is so many of them out in the world. Like, bitch, take your pick. Just don't take your pick from somebody else's motherfucker. I understand, like, everybody wants to be in a relationship. Or not even everybody, but everybody wants to feel loved, okay? They want to feel wanted. They want to feel like they're needed, okay? And they want to just have someone that's a companion to them that they can open up to and talk to and be able to relate to and have good times with. You know what I'm saying? That is that's cool. That's the human. That's what's supposed to go down in the DMs. You know what I'm saying? That's what's supposed to go down. But and let me tell you something. If a motherfucker blocks me from all type of social media that he's on and we was cool on it before and then he just blocks me out of the clear blue. Excuse me, I had to sneeze. Like I said, if he blocks me from all his social media and then blocks my number, bitch, I'm not about to try months later to fucking text you or call you or even reach out to you. You got to be out your rabbit ass mind if you think a bitch like me is going to go ahead and stoop that low to fucking reach out to you. I don't give a fuck how drunk I am. I'm not about to fucking reach out to you. A bitch won't be really drunk. I'll be high. 
So I'm not about to reach out to you. Okay. That's just, let me tell you, because for one, I got pride and I'm not about to be kicking my pride underneath the motherfucking table. Like it don't even matter. And then sweep it up later. That's one thing I don't do. If you block me on anything and you don't fucks with me no more, I am not about to reach out to you months later and then allow you to go back to what it used to be like. Like, where do we do this at? Bitch, follow the yellow brick road. Okay. Let me tell you something. The man is 40 years old. You 25. He looks like your father. Okay. For one, he sat in his ways, okay? He's busy taking care of a 15-year-old and blocking your ass, okay? Did you ever get around to asking him why he blocked you? Because it don't seem like you did. It just seems like you went along with the program and was down with for whatever. Let me tell you something about one thing. We got to have self-esteem. We got to have some pride. We have to love ourselves before we allow anybody to walk all over us. And this is what this motherfucker is doing. You didn't ask him basically what's good with the both of y'all. Oh, I like spending time with you. We hang out, blah, blah, blah. He ain't telling you nothing you really want to hear. So basically, he's not really that into you, okay? And I'm not saying this to hurt your feelings, but I'm saying this to spare your motherfucking feelings. Don't waste your time on somebody that really don't or is really not. Don't waste your time on somebody that's not worth wasting it on, okay? And when I say that, meaning you shouldn't have to ever feel like you're wasting your time on somebody because waste is a horrible word, okay? Waste is not the best word to use, but you are wasting your time on somebody who don't deserve it. He don't deserve your your company. He don't deserve your companionship. He don't deserve your combo. He don't deserve any of that. Point blank period. He deserve, does not deserve your attention. And me personally why would somebody just out of the clear blue fucking decide to block you on all social media when everything was all gully it was all good we was chilling we was kicking it we was hanging out we was facetiming we was talking we was sexting and all of that good stuff because i know you was you know what i'm saying and then all of a sudden he just doesn't want to fuck with you no more i tell you why Okay, this might be my opinion and I might could be wrong because a bitch do have her own opinion and I'm entitled to that motherfucker, okay? But the man found Tom's ass, found some some next bitch, some new Rita on Tinder. He slid up in her fucking message box and was getting all cozy and tender with that bitch, okay? So when you thought that you was messaging him all the time, you probably was, but at the same time, this man was probably messages somebody else there's no reason for somebody to just all of a sudden out of the clear blue decide to block you on shit just because what you wake up one morning and just be like you know what or better yet you go to sleep that night y'all message each other good night boo oh good night boo boo good night bae and then he still he ain't fall asleep yet time ain't fall asleep yet so he like you know what i'm gonna block this bitch reader just because I don't feel like talking to her for so much. I ain't got no reason. I'm just going to block Rita. And I'm going to just carry on my way. Do you really think that this motherfucker decided at that moment in time that he was just going to block you because he just didn't have shit else to fucking do? No, bitch. He was interested in somebody else on Tinder or POF or Matchmaker or Match.com or whatever. You know what I'm saying? This is what the shit is about. He found somebody else and then that shit didn't work out. So you hit him back up and then he responded a day later. Now, let me tell you something. When you respond to somebody's text message a day later, like 24 hours, nigga, don't even bother to respond because that means that you were bored. You see my motherfucking message come through. I don't know about you guys, but if I don't answer a text message on my phone, as soon as I you know, go to the home screen. There's the number one next to that message, text message box that says you got one unread message or two or three or whatever. You know what I'm saying? So I know that they're there. Okay. So I'm pretty sure whatever type of phone you have, whether it be an iPhone, whether it be an Android, that there is some type of notifications that bitch, you got a motherfucking unread text message. So the day that you was fucking texting him, the night where you was tipsy, bitch, that motherfucker was busy messaging somebody else. So then he probably was going through the breakup stage right then and there. And then he decided the next 24 hours he was going to hit your ass up because he needed some tender. Okay. Let me tell you something. 
it's cool that y'all use these social media sites to meet each other on, but I'm going to say this much. Be real fucking hesitant and be real careful because you don't know who the fuck you mean. It be people like this who just all of a sudden decide to fucking just block you and then you want to reach out and let me tell you, once you block my motherfucking ass, you blocked. All right, I'm not fucking with you no more. You you blocked. Like, if you see me out in public, remember you blocked me so you really can't see me, okay? Like, you know, I forget what show it was I seen, like, you want to be blocking people in real life. Like, I wish I could block a motherfucker in real life, like, on some real shit because then I'd be walking through the streets and I've done blocked you so you can't even see me. Like, I walked right past your punk ass and you didn't even see me because I blocked you. So, once you block me, Bitch, keep me motherfucking blocked. Don't unblock me and then reach out to me and be like, hey, girl, I'm going to be like, bitch, didn't you block me? Because I got up my hater blockers on right now and I know you blocked me like on some real shit. Bitch, you blocked me. I never, when I block somebody, I never unblock they ass. Like, because there's a reason for a block. You stay on that block list. Okay. It's like the blacklist. You stay on that motherfucking block list. Until the end of motherfucking time. I don't give a shit if you see me out in the street. Bitch, you blocked. You blocked, okay? You blocked, you circled, you triangled, whatever the fuck you want to call it. You motherfucking blocked. Now, here was the shit that you shouldn't have did. You shouldn't have fucking reached out to him. Bitch, I don't even know how you got through to him if he blocked your phone number. Either way, neither here nor there, there was a reason for him to block your fucking ass. And you should have just left it at that. You on an app Tinder. Let me tell you something, sweetheart. You too cute for him, okay? And I say this because he just doesn't look like he's your type. You know, like, you see people, they're totally different. And I could be wrong for saying that. But I say this because, you know what? You are a beautiful person. Your your picture, you are a beautiful person. Like, I always tell you guys, I could always tell when somebody smiles that they're really happy or they're unhappy. Just from looking at her smiles, she looks really happy. Now, looking at his picture, he looked kind of, like, miserable and old and tired and shit, like... He don't look like he's no fun. You know what I'm saying? He just really don't look like he any fun for her. And she, what, just from looking at her picture, she looks like she is bubbly. She looks like she likes to have fun, a good time. She's friendly. And that's how she looks. When I look at his picture, I see total opposite. And I understand the opposite to track. But honey, Rita, don't waste your time on somebody that's not worthy. Okay? Serious. Like on some real shit. There be... People get on these apps and they, these social media meet and greet things. I don't know what the fuck you want to call them, but they tell you all different types of lies of who they are, what they do. And like, he could be telling you anything from underneath the moon, stars, sun, and the fucking earth. Okay. From hell and back. And it's fucked up because you gullible enough to believe it. And okay. So you made a mistake by reaching back out to him after months. Like I said, it wouldn't be me. I couldn't do it. But. Y'all got back into the groove of things. Was there any type of communication as to why the fuck he blocked your ass? Like, because the first thing I would have said is, so why'd you block me? If I would have texted him, I'd have been like, why'd you block me? Why? You know what I'm saying? Like, what was the purpose of you blocking me? I'm telling you. I'm telling you. And I'm telling you. And I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one feeling this. But I feel like Tom blocked her because he met some new tenderoni on tinder dead up straight up he met some new roni on tinder some new tender roni and then that shit didn't pan out and it didn't work out in his favor so what happened he allowed her to step back into his area and they went back to conversing and ha 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 ki 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 it up let me tell you Age ain't nothing but a number. That's true indeed. But when somebody treats you like shit, that shit really fucking matters. Okay? Feel me? Age ain't nothing but a number. But when somebody treats you like shit, that shit matters. Okay? That's when it matters. I don't give a fuck if he was 10 or, well, not 10 times, 10 years times, 10 times your age. Okay? So that's like 100. Okay? Fuck it. You don't want him to be 100. But I don't give a fuck if he was like 27, 24, 20. I don't give a shit if he was fucking 90. You don't deserve to be treated like that. Nobody deserves to be dissed and dismissed and then fucking reopen. Man, that just right there lets you see that, you know what? He can do it again if he feels like it. And then when he feels like talking to you again, bitch, 
that's when he's going to talk to you. Never let nobody have their way with you. I don't give a fuck if you are a man or a woman. If somebody block your ass because out of the clear blue, y'all was, you know, having a good relationship, warming up to one another, and then all of a sudden they stop fucking talking to you, either I'm going to think you fucking crazy and psychotic or you got somebody else. And, or you just don't want to be bothering me. And if you just don't want to be bothered with me, then that's cool. Cause nigga, I don't want to be bothered with you neither. And if you crazy, I definitely don't want to be bothered with you. And if you got another man or a woman in your life, I definitely wouldn't not want to fuck with you either. So Rita, my advice to you is to step the fuck off. Okay. Do him like he did you, because as long as you keep running behind him, that nigga's just going to keep going further. So you right here and he right here. You here and he all the way over here. You see what I'm saying? The distance. Like, he keep going. So, look, here go Rita. Here go Tom. And then it's like, oh shit, I can see right in between that shit. Here go Rita again and here go Tom. Tom is out the fucking picture. Now you can't even see this motherfucker. Because you, you chasing behind him. Like I said, it's nice to have a relationship. It's nice to be loved. But when you got to second guess somebody's actions and the reasons why they fucking blocked you or treat you the way you get treated, then sweetheart, it's not healthy. It's not toxic. There's so much more to do in life besides that motherfucker. Okay. So yes, Rita, get you a new man off off of fucking tender. Okay. I, you know what? I'm, I'm really trying to find out, figure out for the life of me. What do y'all get out of these relationships? You know why I say this? Because now, I have never really watched that show, Catfish by MTV. I never really watched it. Because, you know, when it came out, I'm older. That shit is like in its eighth or seventh season. Now, we, I'm 44. So, could you imagine? I, I, I'm older. So, when that shit came out, it had people was doing MySpace and shit. Like, that shit wasn't interesting to me. But I watched some real shit. I watched some real shit. But I never really watched it. I may have seen, like, a handful of episodes in my lifespan of since the very first season to this season now. Let me tell y'all. I went on Hulu because I have Hulu. And they had all the seasons except for the latest one. Then I went on Terrarium, you know, the thing where you I get all the shows and all the movies and shit. I went on that and watched the like, latest season. So you could see the difference in like social media and people, the way they dress or whatever. But what's so crazy to me is People meet these people on social media, on, on dating sites, and they be going like years. Like when I say years, these bitches be like 10 years going back and forth with the person, talking to them verbally or text messages or messaging and still have yet to meet them. And then that person, the other one person wants to meet the other person. And then that other person's like, well, I'm busy. I can't. They always got an excuse for some shit. Like, so you've had an excuse for 10 motherfucking years or five years or a year. Let me tell you something. If that were me, like I'd be saying to my daughters, if that was me, you got three motherfucking months to meet me. And if you don't meet me within those three months, I'm not fucking with you no more. Like, how could you want to marry somebody be really involved with somebody, like really love somebody on off of a website that you have never been able to meet personally. Like they could be telling you all kind of lies. And it's crazy because these people get duped the house. They get really dubbed. Okay. They get motherfucking dubbed. You'll see the person after like five years, three years, two years, you think this person is like so fucking handsome and cute or beautiful. And then it'd be like some fucking Fiona or Shrek motherfucker. Like, seriously, like, mm -hmm. I watched every last season within like a week. I, Cause I was just like sitting there making videos or editing videos and making wigs. And like, I don't really care about looks. Like, now I will be lying if I said that. But on the show, there'd be like these dweeb looking motherfuckers. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you look like a dweeb. And you think this bitch that looks like a fucking goddess is really going to be into you? Like, or, you know what I'm saying? You, bitch, you look like Fiona, Shrek's wife, and you really think, like, this motherfucker that looks like a god is going to be into you? Like, I mean, I know everybody is in, everybody has their own taste. Beauty's in the eye of beholder, or everybody likes, there's always somebody for somebody. But let's just be realistic. I would watch the show and Ned and Max would have me dying because they would say some things that 
you know what the fuck they meant. Like they would be looking at the picture like, oh, this person is fake. Yeah, they'll never like they would never message you. And like, damn, you just you this short of saying they wouldn't message your ugly ass. Why would you think that? And that's what I'd be sitting there saying to myself. So it's like, you know, some of these websites, these dating sites, you definitely have to stay away from like steer clear of because people be selling you hopes and dreams. Then they send um, people money, each other money, gifts. Like what the fuck is wrong with people these days? Like, I'm sorry, but maybe I'm just too old fashioned, but I, I'm not about to be dating somebody for years and years and sending you money and gifts and I ain't even get to meet you. Like, and here's the thing. Why do they even say, oh, I'm in a relationship with somebody? Bitch, you're not in a relationship with anybody. You didn't even get to meet them yet. Like you've been dating them for online dating them for three years. What's so fun about online dating? Like you don't even get to meet the person. Like how much fun is that? Let me tell you something. If I would need to listen, I'm gonna need you to lay next to me. I'm gonna need you to cuddle me. I'm gonna need you to love me. I'm gonna need you to stay clear of them for a while, Rita, because I guarantee you Tom has got some chick on the side. He got himself a little tenderoni. You know, like Bobby Brown say, tenderoni, all right? Tender motherfucking roni. Stay clear of him because, honey, he's really not worth your time. He done already blocked you, which means he don't want you to be bothered with you. And if somebody don't want to be bothered with you, girl, keep it pushing. Keep it pushing. Okay, so now we on to the next one, okay? And this one, you know, I'm going to just call this the freaking Dating Wednesday because this is, listen, okay, so this is, is a little bit longer than Rita's. Hey, April, I love your channel. I don't want to make this too long, but let me start by saying I can do bad all by myself. I'm a 22, I am a 22-year-old female, and the guy I was dating was 31 years old. There you go, another one. He is 11 years old, right? I think so. No, nine, I think. I already have a four-year-old little boy, and he too has a son. We met at a grocery store. I was actually minding my business and not looking for anyone, but I decided to give this guy a chance. The crazy thing is, the week before, the same guy sent me a friend request on Facebook, and normally I don't accept people. I don't know, but I, but I did for him. So basically, a week before she met him, he sent her a friend request. We talked just about every day from that day and then like a couple of months went by and we started meeting face to face. Everything was great. Here is where the issue comes in. His baby mama, she's only seen me once around this time. Months go by and she starts that shit. Okay, his baby mama starts in I want you back type thing. Okay, months go by and she starts the I want you back thing. What pissed me off more is that he became indecisive to who he wanted to be with, which shouldn't have been a problem when he said he wanted to be with me. Anyways, she started threatening him if he didn't decide to be with her. She would take his son back to Baltimore if he didn't want to be with her. That died down, but then she would start tagging him on Facebook about them having a love life, and I would ask him about it, and he would tell me nothing was going on. I forgot to mention he wasn't working legally at that time, if you know what I mean, and ended up doing some jail time. I made sure he always had money on his books because his family nor friends ever came to visit or send him anything. During the time he was in jail, I was working a lot. When he got out, I didn't have the chance to see him, but over time, I started seeing those posts on Facebook again of them, his baby mama and him actually taking pictures together at Christmas dinner, smiling from ear to ear, cheesing from ear to ear, looking like a big ass happy family. Yes, I was mad as hell. By this time, I was getting real suspicious. Valentine's Day rolls around and we exchange gifts and do what any couple does during that time. I'll say about two weeks later, I had not too long ago got off work and I see a message from him. By this time, his number wasn't even saved anymore. That said, call me ASAP. So I call him and we have a conversation and we hang up. <clears throat> I get another message and he says, I messed up and I know it's going to break your heart. I call him back and he says, I'm sorry to tell you, but I cheated on you after I got out of jail and now my baby mama is pregnant. Ain't that a damn shame? It took some time, but I finally let this boy go. But now he won't stop bothering me. I've been hurt like this before, but for this to happen again after I told you about it the first time is just damn near crazy. Meaning she told, um, I think she told me, I'm not really sure. 
I recently saw him again, and this time he was this. I recently saw him again, and this time he was with his baby mama and her mama. I was with my son and my two best friends. One was a boy, and the other is a female. He's met the um. He's met both of my best friends before. But when he saw me standing beside my male best friend, he got mad in his feelings and stormed off the, and down the aisle, thinking me and him were together. I'm like, me and you are no longer together. What does it matter to you who I'm with now? He says, because there isn't anybody else for you but me. So if I see you with another man, I can't let that happen. Excuse me? What's your thought on this? So basically, we're going to call her Janice, and we're going to call him Malik. So Malik basically met, um, so Janice met Malik at a grocery store, but I think she said a week prior to that, she, he friend requested her on Facebook and she accepted. <clears throat> Even though she doesn't really accept too many friends on Facebook, she accepted him. Hmm. Now he's 31 and she was 22 at the time. She has a four-year-old son and he has a son too. Not really sure how old his son is, but, you know, they started digging each other. They was messaging each other on Facebook or whatever, texting. And then they finally got the nerve and the, the, the gut to meet up and, you know, started. You know, after a couple of months, they started meeting each other face to face. Great. She even said everything was great. Until later on down the line, here comes the issue of his baby mama. She want to get back with him. She posts and shit on Facebook about how they in a love affair, a love relationship. She asking Malik about it. Janice is asking Malik about it. And he's like, no, nah, ain't nothing going on. Ain't nothing going on. Now, mind you, okay, mind you. Malik asked and got arrested because he ain't got no job. Now, you you girls are probably like, well, who gets arrested if they don't got no job? Because there'd be a lot of people in jail. No, bitches. He got arrested because he had a job, but it wasn't a legal job, okay? So Janice goes and Janice is save a hoe. You know what I'm saying? She's saving his hoe because this nigga's a hoe. She's saving a hoe. She going to the jail. She visiting him. She sending him money, putting money on his books, conversaries, probably talking to him on the phone and shit because his baby mama, his mama, his friends and family ain't doing shit. So she making sure he good, he all right. And she working a lot. The bitch probably working a lot because she put money on his commissary and shit. Well, anyway, as soon as he gets out of jail, this nigga don't even go see her. Malik don't even go see her and say, what's up, shorty? You know, I want to thank you for everything you done did for me, et cetera, et cetera. Nah, she don't see him for a minute. I don't know how long ago she didn't see him, but time goes by when she ain't get to see this nigga. And then she sees on Facebook, the new post. She see Malik and his motherfucking baby mama all booed the fuck up. You know, like, da-da, booed up. Yeah, they booed the fuck up for Christmas, smiling ear from ear like a Chester cat, smiling. Okay, I'm pretty sure the food wasn't that great, but they smiling like one big ass happy family. So now, guess what? Janice is in her feelings. Okay, bitch, I'll be in my motherfucking feelings too. But I tell you what, though, I would be in my feelings on the DL, on the low, and nobody would know about that shit because I wouldn't even put myself out there. So, you know, Christmas pictures. Christmas is in December. That's two months away from Valentine's Day. They exchange fucking gifts. Malik and Janice exchange gifts on Valentine's Day. And they do what the fuck they do on Valentine's Day. We all know what that is. They fucking, okay? First of all, here's where you went wrong, bitch. If I see you and your baby mama on Facebook smiling like two Chester cats, okay, because I'm pretty sure y'all didn't just have family dinner, but y'all smiling like two motherfucking Chester cats, like one big ass happy family, bitch, I'm going to take that as one big ass happy family, like bitch, I'm going to take that like y'all fucking around, I ain't seen you since you came out of jail, I done took care of you and came there and visited you while this fucking raggedy ass bitch didn't do a goddamn thing for you, but now you on motherfucking social media, smiling like a goddamn Chester cat from Alice in Wonderland, like bitch, you didn't see that shit, this motherfucker teeth shining from here to there and you still gonna fucking see him on Valentine's day and exchange gifts with him somebody ought to take a motherfucking bow and arrow and stab you in the heart with that shit okay what the fuck is wrong with you if you see this motherfucker on social media smiling from ear to ear with his baby mama who done already said i want to be with you we in a love relationship and all this other shit then that means that bitch was been fucking him okay now on valentine's day y'all exchange gifts was that before or after he gave her the gift Okay, because I'm pretty sure that bitch got the gift, the deed. 
okay? Because she now ended up pregnant. Let me tell you, this where you went wrong. That nigga wouldn't have got a Valentine's Day chocolate from me, motherfucking flower, heart, goddamn card, or hello from me at all. Motherfucker, what? His ass would have got blocked. I would have blocked him in a heartbeat. Now you in your feelings, and now he got this bitch pregnant, so he baby zaddy again to this bitch, okay? Which means he been fucking her. They been in a relationship, okay? And now you see him in public, and you see him with her, and they little little happy family, and he's acting all crazy and tripping the fuck out because you with your best friend, male and female, and he feeling some type of way because you with your male best friend standing close to him. I wouldn't give a fuck if donkeys flew and motherfucking apes came running after them up in the sky. I don't give a fuck how you feel after you didn't treat me, cheated on me, got a bitch pregnant, lied to me, used me, and then you trying to be up in your feelings because you see me with somebody else. Nigga, bye. Miss me with that shit. Like, really, please miss me with that shit. I wouldn't give a shit. He talked about he the only one for you. What? He's the only one for you to give you the clap. He the only one for you to give you gonorrhea. He the only one for you to give you what? AIDS, HIV, crabs, STDs, or whatever, herpes. Let's just be real because he the only one. Nigga, there is a whole bunch of fish of the pond, sea, lake, river of men for out there. Men. Go on Tinder, nigga. And you'll see men is up there lined up to be fucking taken. Go on any motherfucking app. He ain't the one for you. The nigga is in his feelings. He's a dog, okay? How the fuck you gonna be somewhere and catch an attitude? Because, first of all, she saw him with his baby mama and his baby mama mama. And did they have a conversation? And then he caught some feelings. Nigga, you was with that bitch. Like, go back over there. Like... That's how you shoot them off. Like, I'll be damned if um, a motherfucker was fucking with me and then you got a bitch pregnant, got out of jail, posted some pictures on fucking social media like y'all been fucking down since day one. And then you gonna get mad and turn around and tell me that I'm the only one for you. Excuse me, but you can't see me with somebody else. Nigga, well, if you can't see me, then I guess your ass is blind because if you ain't blind, you're going to see me all the fucking over the motherfucker with somebody else besides your punk ass. Like I said, we all need fucking love, but I just find, you know what? I'm going to be the first to admit I have been through my fair share of bullshit in a relationship, heartache in my own relationship. But my time away from my husband, I was I allowed myself to grow as a better person. I might not be the best motherfucker in the world, meaning I'm good, I'm nice, I'm I'm handing out fucking food and baskets of food and helping the homeless, but I became a better person for myself, meaning I understand, like, you know what? I'm not going to tolerate nobody's bullshit. I'm not putting up with nobody's bullshit. If you want to hand me bullshit, I'm going to hand that stinking ass shit right back to you, okay? I'm, I have a barrier for bullshit, okay? I have a barrier for bullshit. And I'm not about to allow anybody to treat me any other type of way. But I guess when you get, like, my age, not saying that I'm old, bitches, because I'm not. I'm 44 years old, and a bitch don't look like it. But when you get my age, you realize over time from experience that these are the things that I'm not going to tolerate. Now, maybe if I was in my 20s, I definitely probably would tolerate that shit because, hey, we've all been in our 20s before. And yes, I have tolerated a lot of bullshit, okay? But now when I look back at it, it's like, girl, you so fucking stupid. If I could go back in time, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, get in the DeLorean from Back to the Future, you know what I'm saying? If I could get in that motherfucking DeLorean and kick my own ass, a bitch would walk up to my own self and kick the shit out of myself, all right? I kick myself so fucking hard, my ass would be flat because of the shit that I know now, all right? Not saying that we all have to be perfect, but I just want for us all as human beings, not as men, not as women, but as men and women to open up our eyes and realize like some people are just not right for you. You know what I'm saying? There is a population in the world of, of people that we can have our choose from. They might not want you that you pick them, but you don't have to settle for less, okay? Don't settle for that shit. If the nigga is fucking and he's got a bitch pregnant, then he's fucking her. If you see them on Facebook and they cheesing, like a bunch of Chester cats, 
then they happy, okay? Motherfucking men do not post bitches on fucking social media or nor do they want to be posted with a bitch on social media if they really ain't in their feelings about the bitch. So he obviously was serious knowing damn well that you could see the message. And I say this because <clears throat> you've seen them before. You've seen the messages before on Facebook. I don't know if it was his Facebook or hers, but he's known you've seen them. So if he's posting pictures on Facebook with him and his bitch, then trust me, he don't get two fucks about you, okay? He already know you've seen them. Well, he just think that you just accidentally gonna miss that post of the day. No. That means that the nigga know what he's doing. This is the bitch he want to be with. So let him be with her. And what would I do in this situation? I tell that nigga to go ahead and ride off somewhere. <sighs> what I really would say is, nigga, go in the corner and die real slow. Okay? Please, go in the corner and die slow. That's what I would fucking do in this situation. I'm not about to let anybody ridicule me. That is fucking humiliation right there. Not only is it humiliation, but person's heart can take but so much. It is not fair to you. But as long as you allow yourself to go ahead and continue on with this, this bullshit, then hey, let him be. He got a baby mama. He got a baby mama twice. That bitch is baby mama twice, okay? So the bitch might be baby mama three again. He not, he not gonna leave her alone. And on top of that, you met the nigga at a grocery store. That's cool. I don't know if he worked there or not. But sometimes we got to leave them rotten fucking tomatoes behind, baby. Okay? Not all of the produce is worth bringing home. <clears throat> Excuse me. Not all of the produce is worth bringing home. Some shit get rotted too fast. And you just be looking at it shit like, oh, that is not for me. Trust me when I tell you, that shit is not for you. And if it were I, I wouldn't even fuck with him. Just leave him the fuck alone. Like, you know, I understand people meet each other on social media. I get it. It's 2018. There's a whole lot of different things that go on in 2018 that I am just not down with. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay, I get it. We going through some shit. I want to find a man. I'm lonely. I'm going to go on this Tinder app and I'm going to give me some pussy tonight or I'm going to give me some dick tonight. Either way, you know, it is what it is. But... I know this is a new day and age, but also when it comes to being a new day and age, you get new type of people out there. And it seems like people could just tell you whatever and you and they and it just feels like you know, you can do whatever to a person. You could just feed them whatever you want to feed them, meaning spoon feed them. Spoon feed them. Just I'm going to just spoon feed this bitch real slow and I'm going to just tell her what I think she wants to hear because I'm pretty sure that this is what she wants to fucking hear. No, bitch. No, not at all. Not at all. It don't work like that. Okay. We have to realize that not meeting everybody on social media is what's up. There are some crazy motherfuckers out there. Okay. Some motherfucking Fiona's out there. Some motherfucking Trek's out there. Like on some real shit. When I say that, I don't mean that in like a good way. Like, you know what Fiona and Shrek ass look like. Now, really, would you want to be looking at somebody's picture, right? And um, you see her, and she look like a dime piece. You know what I'm saying? And then when you finally meet them in person, it's motherfucking Shrek and Fiona. Like, are you serious right now? Does this bitch look like an ogre? Like, oh, come the fuck on. Let's just, come on. For real. Leave him alone because the nigga is a catfish, okay? Meaning he telling you a bunch of lies and the nigga on the other side doing some other shit. Leave him be. You got a son who's four years old and not only that, but that's your son. You'd never want him to be around another man that ain't worth shit because you don't want him picking up those bad traits. Even at four, they could pick up some bad habits that they really don't need. So teach your son to be a gentleman. A smart gentleman. Not no fucking dog on the street that look like he's begging for scraps and homeless. Okay? Let that nigga stay on the street where he belong and move on, sweetheart. Because in all reality, if your heart was already broken by him, I guarantee you it will continue if you allow this. So on that note, you guys, I'm out. I'm starving. I hope you guys did not hear my stomach rumbling. I love you guys. Make sure you rate, comment, subscribe. Thumbs this video up. And I'll see you guys in the soon-to-come video.
I'm gonna stop with this hungry shit. <laughs>